is it even a good idea to be training right now or will that put our immune systems at risk? We're gonna jump into the science on how training affects your immune system and I'll talk about how to adjust your training accordingly given this year's shifted cycling schedule. Let's first get into the science on how hard training affects your immune system. It's a pretty widely held belief amongst athletes that a hard workout or a race compromises your immune system and many athletes report getting sick after racing. Interestingly enough though, there's a lot of research out there that contradicts this belief. For example, this study on exercise and immunity to the influenza vaccine in older individuals categorized subjects into one of three groups, active, moderately active, or sedentary. The results showed that physically active participants had the best immune response. This study also found that exercise enhanced immune health in older subjects following the flu vaccine. These results have been found in animal studies as well. For example, this study looked at the survival rates of active versus inactive mice after being infected with salmonella. They found that active mice had a better survival rate than the sedentary mice at 34 out of 77 versus 23 out of 79. Old people and mice? I had this same skepticism when reading these studies. Of course, living an active lifestyle is good for your immune system, but what about putting your body under a considerable amount of stress like we do when we race or do a hard workout? Surely that can't be good for your immune system, right? This study on infectious episodes in runners before and after a race compared the incidence of infectious episodes in 273 runners during the training period before and after a 5K, 10K, or half marathon race. What they found was that 34% of the runners who had trained less than 15 hours per week had at least one infectious episode compared to only 25% for runners who trained more than 15 hours per week. Basically, those who trained more got sick less. On top of this, during the week following the road race, runners did not report an increase in infectious episodes as compared to the week prior to the race. They concluded that runners with a more serious commitment to regular exercise may experience less infectious episodes than recreational runners because of both direct and indirect effects. It's not just one study coming to this conclusion. This study reported better immune function in marathon runners over sedentary controls. And both these studies on large groups of ultramarathon runners reported that these athletes report fewer missed days of work or school due to injury or illness. If any athletes are severely stressing their body through exercise, it's ultramarathon runners. In this 2018 review on debunking the myth of exercise-induced immune suppression, they deconstructed the open window hypothesis that states that a short window of time after exercise, your immune system is compromised. As it turns out, limited reliable evidence exists to support the claim that vigorous exercise heightens risk of opportunistic infections and the dramatic reductions to lymphocyte numbers and function one to two hours after exercise reflects a transient and time-dependent redistribution of immune cells to peripheral tissues resulting in a heightened state of immune surveillance and immune regulation as opposed to immune suppression. Basically, it's a misconception to label any form of acute exercise as immunosuppressive. Instead, exercise most likely improves immune competency across the lifespan. To be fair, there is research out there that supports immune suppression with exercise, but these studies are few and far between. Getting sick after a race could be caused by a number of factors, like stress, travel, lack of sleep, or simply being exposed to more people. So in short, should you stop riding your bike so you don't suppress your immune system during the coronavirus? No, not at all. If anything, you should continue riding your bike to improve immunity, especially in this time of high stress. This study on physical activity, stress, and self-reported upper respiratory infection found that highly stressed people, particularly men, appear to benefit more from physical activity than those with lower stress levels. Well, this study on the effect of detraining on power athletes found that after 14 days of detraining, levels of growth hormone and testosterone significantly increased, while cortisol and creatine kinase levels decreased. The message here is that if you've been training hard, take a little break, perhaps do some cross training, focus on strength, but whatever you do, reduce your training load. 